Welcome to Sound Nerd's Doodle Tutor series. This video will walk you through imaging the aorta and the inferior vena cava when scanning a right upper quadrant protocol. The aorta is the main artery that leaves the heart and distributes oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. It gives rise to many arteries that are visible by ultrasound. The abdominal aorta begins after the aorta passes through the diaphragm. General sonographers can use ultrasound to evaluate the shape, size, and blood flow through the aorta. When the aorta is part of the right upper quadrant exam, only the proximal segment is evaluated. This is the area from the diaphragm to the superior mesenteric artery. This can be thought of as more of a screening than a thorough dedicated aorta exam. If the patient's symptoms align with aortic pathology, then the right upper quadrant exam may not be the correctly indicated exam and the ordering provider should be contacted. The proximal aorta is quickly evaluated with one image in the longitudinal plane and a measurement. Although the aorta is typically evaluated more thoroughly in a dedicated aorta exam, the right upper quadrant serves as a screening of the proximal aorta. The sonographer should always be aware of anatomy like the aorta when it appears in other images. At your location, the proximal aorta may not be required as part of the right upper quadrant exam or more images of the aorta may be needed based on your facility's protocols. If you are drawing along, make sure to have your paper and pen now. If you want to print out pre-made sectors, check out the link in the description box. After each image is completed, the image will pause on a white background. This will be a good time to pause the video to complete your drawing before moving to the next image. Important features of an image are labeled in capital letters, where other things that you might be able to see are labeled in lowercase. The proximal aorta is quickly evaluated with one long image. This is an aorta image, so you should take care to get the aorta as horizontal as possible on the screen. This makes for better ultrasound physics, making the walls of the aorta nice and crisp. Use TGCs to clear the vessel of artifact and move the focus at or below the aorta. The proximal aorta does appear in our long left images as well, but in those images, we're focusing on the liver. The reason we can focus on the liver is because we have taken this image, which focuses on the aorta. Center the transducer on the body at the xiphoid process. Elongate the aorta so it extends all the way across the screen using small twisting motions. When one side looks good, pivot from that side so that the transducer connects it all the way through. Try having your patient take a deep breath in to make the aorta more horizontal and bring the proximal portion into view. You should see the heart and diaphragm superiorly. And to show that you are proximal, demonstrate the location of the celiac axis and superior mesenteric artery takeoffs on the anterior side of the aorta. The left diaphragmatic crux, esophageal junction, and the liver sit anterior to the aorta as well, where the spine will be seen posteriorly. Measure the proximal aorta as close to the heart as you can where you have clear walls. The walls can become distorted due to lung and heart motion as well as proximity to the left diaphragmatic crux. Avoid being too close to the celiac axis or measuring into the spine. The aorta's anterior-posterior dimension is measured outer to outer wall and should be perpendicular to the vessel. The aorta should measure less than 3 centimeters in any direction. Larger than 3 centimeters indicates an aortic aneurysm or enlargement of the aorta. The inferior vena cava is another abdominal vessel that brings blood back to the heart from the lower extremities and the abdominal organs. The IVC and its tributaries are also well seen by ultrasound and should be evaluated for thrombosis or blood clots. During the right upper quadrant exam, color is used at the level of the hepatic veins as they enter into the IVC to show patency. The inferior vena cava is not typically measured for size as it is variable, but in general the proximal IVC should be less than 2 to 2.5 centimeters. The inferior vena cava image is taken as a standalone image to focus on the IVC and make sure that there are no pathologies of the vessel. The IVC will be in other images and should be evaluated as it is seen. However, in the right upper quadrant protocol, just the proximal portion is necessary. The IVC, surprisingly, is typically easier to see than the aorta. This is because the IVC sits just a little bit more anterior in the body than the aorta does. The IVC sits a little bit more to the patient's right, has variable appearance with breathing, and the walls are not as bright or as thick as the aorta's. You should use these checkoff details 
to make sure that you're on the correct vessel. The vessel should be cleared out using TGCs. Evaluate for any internal contents that may be disrupting flow. The left hepatic vein can be seen connecting to the IVC at the proximal location. The heart and diaphragm are superior in the image and the liver is anterior. There are a lot of other structures that we can see in this image, such as the portal vein, the hepatic artery and cross section, and a little sliver of the ligamentum venosum. The next image that you'll take of the IVC is a color image. So unlike the grayscale images, when you use color, you want your vessel to be at an angle. The natural dive of the IVC into the body should make this a little easier. Turn color Doppler on, showing patency of the IVC. The inferior vena cava will most likely be assigned both red and blue colors as it is in a very pulsatile location. Thank you for watching Sound and Nerds Doodle Tutor series on the aorta and IVC as they are part of a right upper quadrant protocol. Be sure to check back for more drawings and other educational content.